to give a comfort, oh God, in a time like this, Lord. We lift up Brother James tonight. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we lift up Shiloh. Oh God, you're able tonight, oh God, to lift up the hand down head. My God, is strengthen the feeble knees. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, remember our children, oh God, in the school system, Lord. Remember them, oh God, in college, oh God. My God, we cancel the assignment of the enemy tonight over their lives, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh Jesus, cover them under your blood of protection. In the name of Jesus, have your way tonight, oh God. God, you can do anything but me. Lord God, we're in this service tonight, Lord. Look on those that are tuning in by Facebook Live. Oh God, somebody need a blessing tonight. Somebody need a word from you, Lord. We ask tonight, oh God, hallelujah, that you would enlighten us, oh God. Hallelujah, give us an understanding, oh God. A revelation of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, make yourself known to us. Oh, reveal yourself in the word, oh God. For it's in the word of God. I got a hiding place. Oh God, reveal it, oh God. Bless us one by one, Lord. Name by name, oh God. Lift up the saints, oh God, tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be with us, oh God. Hallelujah. We need you, oh God. In a time like this, oh God, we need you, Lord. Continue to touch, oh God. Lead us and guide us, oh God. Father, if you do it, we'll give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. These are the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Come on down, give me the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Time is filled with, with transition. Oh, no.
Come on, give him the glory tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Hold to his hand. God doesn't change your hand. God don't change. Hallelujah. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we welcome you tonight to the midweek connection of the Way Church. Praise the Lord. Located here at 2493 Wendell Boulevard. Praise the Lord. Where you have the opportunity to come and help us celebrate Jesus. At this time, praise the Lord. If you will turn your attention to the screen for now. Welcome to the Way Church, where anything can happen. Our pastor is Marcus Scott Sr. And the first lady is Letitia Scott. Join us for any of our weekly services, online or in person. We'd love to have you. The announcements for November are as follows. Friday, November the 12th, Joshua's Generation will be hosting a worship service held in our sanctuary beginning at 7 p.m. Tuesday, November the 16th, join Lady Scott and Sarah's daughters on Zoom at 7 p.m. for word and prayer. It's revival time. Join us on Friday, November the 19th and Saturday, November the 20th. Our guest revivalists will be Pastor Johnny Brown. The service on Friday will begin at 7.30 p.m. and the service on Saturday will begin at 6 o'clock p.m. Ladies, check into Facebook on Fridays for good things with Lady T. Gentlemen, join Elder Lewis on the second and fourth Thursdays on Zoom. They are beginning a new book series on how God makes men. The Compassion Care Team is asking each family of the Way Church to donate $20 towards sponsoring a Thanksgiving meal for a needy family. Please see Sister Adrena Griffin to turn in your donations by November the 14th. Grief Share is available for those who are in need of assistance handling grief or hardship. Please see Sister Sharika Lewis for additional details. Spirit Sunday is every fourth Sunday. You can order merchandise on our website or see Sister Joy Mangum to place an order. Have you registered for Joyfest? We've just added the Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole to our lineup along with Minister Jarrell Smalls. You do not want to miss this event. Register now at twcwindell.net forward slash Joyfest. Vendors are welcome to reach out to Sister Sharika Lewis for spaces left. Happy birthday to all of you who celebrate a birthday this month and happy anniversary to all of our couples who celebrate an anniversary this month. These are your announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's sweet, I know. He's sweet, I know. Dark out
we have done in our life. We're so glad to see all of you God's people tonight. Amen. Making your way, amen, out to the house of prayer. Amen. To this midweek connection. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. As we, amen, began and continue, praise the Lord, in this series called The Acts Kind of Church. We certainly honor the Lord for our first lady being the list on tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Certainly to our deacons and ministers, yeah. praise the Lord, and all of you God's people, our mother, praise the Lord, yeah. and God, amen, yeah. to her. Yeah. And many of you that are watching, amen, by way of Facebook Live, yes. amen, praise the Lord. And I've seen an outpour of those that have, praise the Lord, decided to get this Acts kind of church book, which lets me know, thank you, Jesus, that you are. Uh, excited, amen, about this series, praise yeah. God. Uh, this, again, I reiterate, is the series that uh, God allowed us to construct, praise the Lord, uh, that would aid and guide us um, in relaunching the ministry of our church, consequently renaming it The Way Church. And God has actually used the principles in this uh, teaching to kind of help, praise the Lord, propel the ministry and yeah, by causing the growth, amen, that you see. Yes, and yes. so this is uh, really dear to my heart. That's why I teach it every year. Amen. Praise the Lord. And every year I go to it, uh, I get more out of it. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so I'm so glad. Yeah. So glad to see you, Sister Renee. Amen. We're definitely praying for you. Yeah. My boy Ryan back there. Bless you, buddy. Amen. In amen. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So tonight, amen, let us, amen, go to the word of the Lord. Amen. I want to uh, our basic text tonight is going to be Acts, the second chapter. Praise the Lord. And we're going to read, amen, in your hearing, praise the Lord, verses 1 through 4. Acts chapter 2, amen, verses 1 through 4. Amen. And tonight, because I'm old and I just want to hear you read, I want us all to read together. In Jesus' name. Then all right. Amen. amen. Acts chapter 2. Amen. Verses 1 through 4. In Jesus' name. Let's read. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the houses where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothed in tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Father, may we do no damage to your word, but speak that which is sound, which is right, which is true, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 What is happening here in the second chapter of the book of Acts is a fulfillment of the promise, amen, uh, that God had made, amen, to the disciples. Amen. amen. Just before Jesus was taken up from them, praise the Lord, he tells them to go to Jerusalem and wait until you be endowed with power from on high. Uh -huh. And he also explains to them and Chapter 1 and verse 8, he says, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, yes. uh, you shall receive power and be witnesses unto me, praise the Lord, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth, praise the Lord, hallelujah. And so it is uh, the fulfillment of that, that the power comes. Now, many times uh, when we go to the second chapter of the book of Acts, uh, especially verses 1 through 4, many times if you are from charismatic or Pentecostal circles, amen, uh, we go there to uh, prove that the Holy Ghost came with tongues. Uh -huh. And so this is our uh, base scripture, our mantra that we, amen, talk about the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues according to Acts 2 and 4. And, and Praise the Lord. What ends up happening is, praise the Lord, when we use it in that fashion, praise the Lord, we miss the whole significance of what is happening. Because more happened 
amen, in this moment than just the speaking of tongues. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, I believe, amen, that the Holy Ghost is not the end game or the end result, praise the Lord, of the church. In fact, I don't believe that the only thing that we are called to do is to just get people filled with the Holy Ghost. And once they're filled with the Holy Ghost, then that's it. Because many times we get them, amen, uh, birthed out, and then we leave them hanging, praise the Lord. And, 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 and then the church, amen, does nothing else, praise the Lord, because uh, they have all of this raw power, but they don't have a purpose. And I want to tell you that the Holy Ghost was not given just so we could walk around and say, I got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was not given so that we could shout in the church and say that we have had a good time. Yeah. Although those things feel very nice and they feel very good, yeah. praise the Lord. But I believe, amen, that God does not waste power. God does not waste resources, but everything he does, everything he gives, he gives it for a specific purpose. Absolutely. Hallelujah. And so tonight, our teaching will be a church empowered for a purpose. Yeah, good. Amen. A church empowered for a purpose. Yeah. Hallelujah. And these are going to be our goals and purpose of this teaching. Number one, to understand that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is not the destination of the church, but the vehicle to get there. Let me say that again. That the baptism of the Holy Ghost is not the destination, amen, but it is the vehicle to get there. Number two, to understand that the Holy Ghost is sent to empower the church to fulfill the Great Commission. Let me say that again. The Holy Ghost was sent to empower the church to fulfill the Great Commission. Other words, no mission, no power. No mission, no power. It, the only reason why he's giving you power because you have something to do. And if you're not doing anything, then there is no purpose in you having the power. In fact, having power with no purpose will bring a condemnation within itself because the Holy Ghost is a gift and God is going to ask you one day, what did you do with the gift that he gave you? Mm. Oh, y'all didn't hear me tonight. And so it's very important, amen, that we understand that. And last but not least, we want to also talk about the importance that unity plays in the purposes of the church. Amen? Yes. So let's give a background, amen. At this time, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Uh, well, I, I better give y'all the principles too, praise the Lord, because uh, what we're going to what we're going to have in principles. Number one, we're going to rediscover the mission of the church, because I know you may think it's crazy, but a lot of churches have forgotten what the church mission is. In fact, there's a lot of people who go to church and don't know what the mission of the church is. Wow. Yes, sir. You talk about, amen, the Great Commission. What is the Great Commission? Yeah. What is that? Uh -huh. Great Commission. So a lot of times, people, praise the Lord, don't even know that the church actually has something that they're supposed to do. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so, so, so the church is not open just so a usher can stand with a glove on with the hand behind the back. Mm -hmm. Amen. Or uh, the church does not exist so I can put that one finger up and, you know, all kind of stuff that we <laughs> deem as churchy mm -hmm. yeah. is not the mission of the church. So we've got to rediscover what the mission of the church is. And then we must seek the refilling of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because I believe when you rediscover the mission, you're going to see how much more you need the power of God to do what he's called you to do. Yes, and then, amen, we need to talk about the emphasis of fellowship. Uh -huh. So I've got a big duty to do tonight. Isn't that something? Amen. So let's give you the background. So praise the Lord. Jesus, amen, has already... Uh, been taken, praise the Lord, in the cloud. He's back. He's back in heaven because he completed his assignment. His assignment in the flesh on earth. Uh -huh. And as you know, in the 14th chapter of Saint John, we talked about it emphatically on last week. Praise the Lord that He told us that if He did not go away, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, would not come. Uh -huh. 
And so he leaves, and in return, he sends the disciples, he sends, amen, the apostles along with other disciples, praise the Lord, uh, to the upper room. Yes. This is the same upper room, consequently, that they had the Last Supper in, praise the Lord. That he sends them there and says, I want you to wait, amen, for the promise of the Father. Wait up for the Holy Ghost. Now, praise the Lord. They have spent, amen, four days in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Bible talks about it being 40 days after his passion. But when the day of Pentecost is fully come, the day of Pentecost is the what? 50th day. So we can deduce, amen, that there has been 10 days that they have actually been waiting on the uh, promise of the Holy Ghost. Now, you ain't got to go along with me with it, but I submit to you, praise the Lord, hallelujah, if you, if you truly accept the Lord in your life, or if you've been baptized in his name, praise the Lord, hallelujah, 10 days is a reasonable amount of time for you, amen, to really get what you need from God. Ten years means there might be some lack of focus or maybe some faulty understanding or lack of faith. Could be you haven't really repented. But within ten days, Jesus is gone. They are in the upper room. They are praying. And then the Holy Ghost falls. The Holy Ghost did not fall just so that they could have a nice experience. The Holy Ghost fell in response to the mission that Christ gave the church. I promise you, it's going to take, glory to God, power to preach the word of God to people that want to kill him. Yes, yes. It's going to take power, praise the Lord, to evangelize not only your local locale, because remember, he gives them Jerusalem. Judea, Samaria, and other part, uttermost parts of the world. Praise the Lord. He, he, he gives them, a man an outline of what it's going to take. But it's going to take power to do it. It's going to take dynamis to do it. Yes, sir. So I'm not going to be able to do this in my natural ability. And so it is an effect that the church is born on the day of Pentecost, but it is born... Amen. In power, because in order for you to be the church, you must possess supernatural power. Come on. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Lord, I praise you. Mm. Which, which would suggest that this mindset of cessationism uh, does not work. Cessationism just simply says that when the last apostle died, then all of the gifts went out of the church. There, you know, no more prophecy, no more apostles, no more prophets. We don't, since we have the canon of scripture, we no longer need the spiritual gifts of the church. But without the spiritual gifts, amen, without the moving of the spirit, you have no church. So the supernatural is absolutely essential to be the church. Can I talk for just a moment? Praise the Lord. And, 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 and so the Holy Ghost causes effective communication. Because see, the miracle of the speaking of tongues, amen, on this first set was not gibberish. Amen. All right, I'm about to get in trouble tonight. Amen. The first descent of the Holy Ghost was not somebody saying, la 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 According to the scripture, amen, mm -hmm. there were dwelling in Jerusalem devout men out of every nation under the heaven. Yep. Yep. Why were they in Jerusalem? They were there because the Passover 50 days ago, so these were Jews. Yeah. And they were in Jerusalem because every devout Jew a man shows up to Jerusalem for at least three times a year to go to the temple, a man, praise God, for the feast. Okay? And so Passover has taken place. Jesus has died. 50 days, and so they have stayed over for the feast of Pentecost. So Jerusalem is overrun with pilgrims from all over. Lord, I pray you. And these guys, because they have been spread out all over the known world at that time, they speak different languages. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, I pray. Amen. And when the Holy Ghost fell on them, they begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave.
gave them up. Other meaning, other than what they were born with speaking. Yes, sir. Lord, I pray you. Now, this was the miracle. The miracle wasn't so much the other tongues. The miracle was that everybody understood what the other one was saying. Let's go, let's go there right quick. Can I, can, I, can I go there for just a minute? Go praise God. Go, go to a man, praise the Lord, uh, Acts 2 and, and, and begin. Read that verse 4. We we'll start at verse 4. Read it. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. Now, they begin to speak because they were filled. The Holy Ghost did not make them speak. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost did not possess them. But they were filled and he gave them the ability, the utterance to speak. Yes, Somebody looked at I'm waiting for God to speak through me. Well, you're going to be waiting because God don't speak through you. Uh -huh. You do the speaking. He gives you the ability. Yeah. Utterance means ability. Right. Utterance means, and sometimes faulty teaching have you somewhere waiting on God to speak through you. I'm waiting on him to take control of my tongue. No, 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 that's possession. He's not possessing you. He's filling you. Uh -huh. He does not take over you, praise the Lord. He fills you, and you speak as he gives the ability. Yeah, this is good. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Hallelujah. And, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them, as the, Spirit gave them the ability. And there was dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. Jews. Devout men. Devout men. Out of every nation under heaven. Out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad. Yes. The multitude came together. The multitude came together. And were confounded. They were confounded. Because that every man heard them Look speak in his own language. Every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed. And they were all amazed. And marveled. Y'all quiet now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Lord, I praise you. It is important that we understand. And, and, and then, when they saw this taking place, you know, when you see God move in an unusual way, you need somebody to give you some clarity. Because the question is, what mean of this? How, why is this happening? What is taking place here? Why are all these folk that don't speak my language, why can't I understand? Why they weren't running around like drunk men? Because the Bible says, all these men are full of new wine. Well, you wouldn't say they were full of new wine if they weren't acting like they were drunk. So they just wasn't standing there saying, ah, da, 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 da. No, they were standing around speaking and, and doing stuff that drunk folk do, bless God. And then all oh, these folk got new wine and what's going Because they were under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And so now I need somebody to interpret what's going on. And Peter stands up under the influence of the Holy Ghost and says, hey guys, these people are not drunk like you think they are. Hallelujah. But what is happening is, is the fulfillment of what God spoke in Joel 2.28. And it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall do what? So, so actually when they were speaking in those tongues, they were actually prophesying. Because that was the fulfillment. They were prophesying. That was my touching. That's the reason why it's important, amen, for you to understand the language. Because as long as it is an unknown tongue, it is not a prophecy. When it's an unknown tongue, I'm edifying myself, but it is not a prophecy. But when that, amen, tongue, which was unknown, becomes known, it is now a prophetic utterance. And how do we know it was a prophetic utterance? Because they understood what each other was saying. And so Peter was qualified to say, this is that. Is that. Yeah. You need somebody that can point it out and say, this is that. You need somebody, I mean, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You need somebody, if you've never experienced the power of God before, you need somebody with experience that can help you and say, this is that. Because you don't know what's going on. Uh -huh. Especially if you've never been raised, amen, in a, in a kind of a holiness setting or, or where the power of God moves very strong. And, and then all of a sudden you see, you see somebody fall out. Yeah. Okay, you need to call EMS. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You see some old lady walking around with her head, her eyes walled in the back of her head. Okay, what's going on? What mean of this? See, we, we, we take it for granted because many of us was raised, but if you've never been raised that way, and you come in and you're something's wrong with these folk, they got some voodoo, hoodoo, or something on them, I ain't going back there. And, 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 and this is the thing. If that's all we do when we get to church, we miss the point. If the only thing I'm going to do is edify myself, jump, shout, speak in tongues, and then come back next Sunday and do it all the same, I'm still fool. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If you come back to church fool, you did something wrong. Yeah. I like that, Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> Lady Scott, if we come back to church fool, we did something wrong. We should go and have used our power and gifted it in the world being what God called us to be and I need to be refilled when I get back to the house of prayer. Oh God, I pray. I need a refilling. And, and, and you see, the reason why there's so much disunity and disfellowship in the church because we ain't, we're, we're not expending energy. We're not doing anything. And, and, and so what ends up happening, beloved, glory to God, we come back to church, find and fault with one another, arguing and fussing over the because we really have not expended energy. But if you come back, amen, needing a refilling of God, one baptism, one baptism, but many refillings, because there's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism. But, but, but there are many refillings of the Spirit. And, and, and if you come back knowing that I need a refilling, I ain't got time to argue with you about your food.
purpose. Well, let's talk about the church mission a minute. Talk about it. Can we do that? Let's talk about it. Quickly. And then go to Matthew 16 and verse 18. And I say also unto thee mm -hmm. that thou art Peter. Y'all remember that, don't you? And upon this rock, yes, I will build my church. I will build my ecclesia. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee. So Jesus has built his church upon a rock. And this rock is the foundational statement that he is the son of the living God. Uh -huh. And so the church, which is the governmental head or headquarters that functions on this earth is God's representative on earth. Uh -huh. And he's given it or delegated that church that he built with special powers to function uh -huh. on this earth. We are to bring the will of God on earth yes. as it is in heaven. Yes, sir. We are his body. Uh -huh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Glory to God. So let's, let's see what the mission is. Mark 16 and 15. Mark 16 and 15. And he said unto them, uh -huh. Go ye into all the world. Go, oh, there's a mission there. Go you, you go. Go ye, you go. Uh -huh. Not them come. Go. You go. Yes. Yes, if you apostolic, do you go? Or are you asking them to come? Uh -huh. Go ye, you go. Yes. Where? Into all the world. Yeah. Into what? All the world. Child, I ain't going to Africa. All the world. <laughs> Child, I ain't going to Asia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. mm -mm. No, not me. He must be talking to the preachers. Mm -hmm. That's right, he is. He's talking to you. You a preacher. You a minister. Yes, sir. Yeah, you ain't got to have no license. You ain't got to have no backward call. Uh -huh. Nobody ain't have to lay hands on you. You are, you are a minister. That's it. Could God from a burning yeah. world. You have a message in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, you thought that, that you had to have a robe on to be a minister? Yeah. You, you thought you had to stand up on, on the platform to, to, to be a preacher? No, 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 no. All you need is the Holy Ghost. That's what you are. You are a preacher on your job. You are a preacher in the school. You are a preacher in your you are a preacher at your family reunion. Yes. <sighs> I just said pastor, I said preacher. And you will call. Good God. You will call not to have church, but to be the church. And the church advances wherever it goes. Salt, light, and ease. Come on, I got my I got my chili in the back. I missed it, praise God. Salt, light, and yeast. Salt seasons and salt preserves. So it keeps it from going bad. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. Light lights up and illuminates, give revelation to people that are in a dark place. Like that's what you are. You're salt. Uh -huh. You're light. Yeah. What does yeast do? Yeast, amen, praise God, goes in the bread and it makes it rise. And it don't take a whole lot of yeast. Just a little bit of yeast will make the bread rise. Just a little bit of yeast. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of the word of God. Just a little bit of love. Just a little bit of life living will affect your whole floor. You thought you were in that cubicle to make money, but you are actually in that cubicle to influence people for the sake of the kingdom. And he gave you the power to influence. When you get in the boardroom, shut it down. Oh, shut up. When they give you the promotion, the promotion gives you more influence. Shut it down. You flaunt because you can buy a new car because you make more money. No! It's the influence, baby! Yeah. Yes, sir. Consequently, people only know you by the money that you make. Uh -huh. So when you make money, you got more status. And when you got more status, you got more influence. 
So God want to give you more money, not to make you look good, but to give you more influence. He wants you to have more money so you can have more influence. Y'all don't like what I'm saying. He wants you to have more money so that you can have more influence. A poor man can have the Holy Ghost, but he don't have the influence that a rich man does. That's a fact. I believe that's so true. I'll say it again. A poor man, praise the Lord, hallelujah, don't have much money. He may have the Holy Ghost, praise the Lord, but because he is poor, he is marginalized, Sister Shannon, and he does not have the influence. Amen. In fact, when they make laws and rules, they don't even have him in his mind, praise God, because he doesn't matter to them. But the more you have financially, they begin to take note of you. So God says, I want you to have influence, so I want to cause material to flow in your hand. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Not just so you can walk around flunking, That's right. but it wants to give you influence. Yes. Jesus. Uh -huh. Why do we have crooked doctors? Because the saints don't stop being doctors. Why do we have crooked politicians? Because we were taught, now, baby, you be separating them. Well, you got a crooked politician because you, amen, have not infiltrated. Who, what better person to get up there and be the president than somebody that's a tongue talker? That's right. I identify with a tongue talker. Uh huh. Uh huh. In fact, if he's a tongue talker, he might go in his room and pray in his language and God give him, glory to God, as a recipe for peace. See, y'all have got quiet in there. But you won't run. Mm -hmm. You don't even vote in your local election. You don't know who's on the ballot. Who's your mayor? Yeah. Who's the mayor of Wendell? Who's the mayor of Nightdale? Who's the mayor of Raleigh? Or Garner? Wherever you may live. I don't know. I, don't know. I just love Jesus. <laughs> and you have no influence. God empowered you. To leave your imprint right. everywhere you go. Say that with me. I've been empowered for a purpose. Now, 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 I want to say this. I want to say this. And I want to take a few minutes to really uh, hit this for just a minute. Uh, because I've been in the church pretty much all my life. And the church that I come from uh -huh. was a small church. Yeah. And because it was small, you know, when you're small, most people make up excuses for being small. Yes. Yeah. So we make it like, well, all the people there, they can't be preaching the truth. Because if, if, they, if they would preach the truth, it would thin out. Nah, if we preach the way you preach, it will thin out. Yeah. That's right. And I can't say it's the truth. Y'all don't like how I say it. And so, praise the Lord, it is imperative that we change the premise that we approach the way we church. The mindset. Because if your mindset is, well, I'm because you know, and, and I'll be honest with you, when I first started, when I first started our church, amen, over 21 years ago, my bishop told me, he says, Praise the Lord, you stand for the truth, son. Don't expect your church to grow real fast. Then don't expect to have a lot of people here, because many people don't go this way. And so my only guide, my only reference to what church should look like told me that small was a badge of honor. So the smaller we were, the more honored I felt. Yes. Amen. And when folk would come and we would start getting big because small was honorable, I preach hard. And they would leave. I want them to leave. You know why? Because that meant huh, I'm standing the word of God. See how dysfunctional that is? Until I read the word for myself and understood that that was a dysfunctional approach to church. Because Jesus drew crowds. 
the apostles drew crowd. So I believe that the church is supposed to grow. And I'm not going to exhaust this particular point because it's going to be covered in another lesson. But I just, I, I just want you to have this in your mind that the church is supposed to grow. Say that with me. The church, the church. is supposed to grow. It's supposed to grow. Anything healthy grows. Amen. Exactly. Amen. Let me say that again. Amen. Anything that is healthy grows. Yes, it does. When something, uh, the growth of something is stunted, that means that there is an imbalance somewhere. There is a disease somewhere. There is a disease. There is a disease. A disease. It's, it's, there is an unbalanced somewhere. And so, amen, non-growth delineates that there is unhealthiness. Okay? That's whether it be a church, whether it be a business, whether it be a body, whether it be your money, your bank account, your money is supposed to grow. Amen. Money answers all things. Your money is supposed to grow. I'm going to say that again. Y'all don't believe it. Your money is supposed to grow. And if your money is always being subtracted, then what that means is there's a disease. Somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. Am I talking tonight? Yeah. So I, I, I just want to give you a, just a couple of scriptures just to give you an understanding that it is proper. Uh -huh. Amen. That it is God's will for the church to grow. Y'all got it? Amen. All right. Give me St. Luke chapter 14 and verse 23. St. Luke chapter 14 and 23. Bless you. Chapter 14 and 23. I want to show you this. And the Lord said unto the servant. And the Lord said unto the servant. Go out into the highways and hedges. Go out into the highways and the hedges. And compel them to come and in. And compel them to come in. Why? That my house may be filled. That what? My house may be filled. It don't matter whether there's two or three gallons in the midst. God is there. No, that's a problem. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's not true. I'm just, that's a problem. He talking about a crap me. Well, well, yeah. We've been using that for years. Uh, we invited a preacher to come in and too many folk didn't show up. So, well, you know, Bible said, well, two or three have got the preacher out the back there in the back. He can hear him saying, oh, Lord, I ain't going to get no money tonight. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Y'all caught. I'm just saying what they think. Uh, When two or three are gathered in the midst, uh -huh. God will be in the Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not the church. Uh -huh. It's a prayer meeting. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. But he says, I want you to compel them to come yeah. that my house may be what? Filled. So he wanted his house filled. Right. Say that with me. God, God wants his house filled. filled. Say it again. God, God wants his house filled. filled. So if you see empty seats, it's your fault. Uh -huh. And you need to feel that way. Every empty seat is your fault. Yeah. That's right. When the pastor had a program, this is my program right now, I'm telling you, you're responsible. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You are responsible. Yep. Every empty seat needs to be filled. Uh -huh. My house my. may be filled. I told you I'm not going to exhaust it, but I get excited about it. Praise God. Give me St. John chapter 15 and verse 1. Watch this. Y'all with me? Yes, it's not confusing, is it? No. All right. I am the true vine. Jesus said, I am the true vine. And my father is the husband. I want to tell you what changed my mind, Brother Wayne, what changed my mind about this small church business. This scripture right here scared me to death. Because most preachers shout, praise the Lord, because they only got one wife and no sweethearts on the side. They don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't dip, they don't chew. They don't hang with them that do. And so automatically, because they don't do none of these things, praise the Lord, they right with God. Amen. But I want to show you something that scared the living doo-doo out of you. Watch this. Every branch in me. Every branch where? In me, in me, that beareth not fruit, that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. He does what? He taketh away every 
branch in me that does not bear fruit, he removes it. He removes it. Now, whether that means he takes them out of the world, could be that. It could mean that he removes their influence. I'm going to show you another scripture. Praise him in just a moment. He removes their influence. He, if he gives you something and you don't do nothing with it, he takes it from you and gives it to somebody that will. Yes, I'm telling you what the word of God said. So, 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 so it's important that you understand that when we are professing him, we also have the pressure to produce. Yes. Watch this. And every branch that beareth fruit. Every branch that beareth fruit. He purges it. He purges it. That it may bring forth more fruit. That it may do what? That it may bring forth more fruit. This is not the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, goodness, gentleness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such things there is no law. That's not what you produce. That's what the Spirit produced. It's the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit that you are supposed to produce or supposed to, that's the correct way to say it, to produce, glory to God, is the bringing in of the sheaves, the bringing in of souls. That's fruit. Yeah. A light just came on. I saw it right over your head. And you're like, hmm, who am I supposed to be bringing to the Lord? Who am I supposed to be? I'm trying to tell you. You are directly responsible as well. I got the Holy Ghost and that of a matter and nobody want to be saved like you. <laughs> the very fact that you have the Spirit makes you salt, light, and yeast. Yes. See how quiet they done got now? <laughs> I'm just teaching it like the Bible says. And if we really look at it like that, we would not have time to be sitting in the church idle causing trouble. We would be working, working. for the kingdom. Yes, Occupy until I come. Yes, not until you get offended. Uh -huh. yeah. Not until you don't like me no more. Uh -huh. Y'all don't like my talk. No. Occupy until Jesus yes, sir. come. Yes, what else does that lady to? Now you are clean. Uh -huh. Word. I have spoken unto you. Yes. Abide in me. Abide in me. And I in you. I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Come on. Except it abide in the vine. Yes. No more can ye. No more can ye. Except ye abide in me. Yeah, except ye abide in me. I am the vine. I am the vine. Ye are the branch. You are the branches. He that abideth in me. He that abideth in me. I in him. And I in him. The same bringing forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If you abide in him and he abide in you, you're going to bring forth much fruit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm telling you what the word says. You're going to bring forth much fruit. What else does it say? If a man abide not in me. If he don't stay in me. He is cast forth as a branch. He is cast forth as a branch. And is withered. And he withers. And men gather. And what do they do with withered branches? They cast them into the fire. Because they ain't no good. They're disconnected. Right. What good are you withered? Mm -hmm. Sitting in the church withered because you're disconnected. Withered. Just because you come to church don't mean you're connected. Amen. It is the fruit that you produce, amen, that determines how connected you are. Oh, you ain't hearing what I'm saying. In the church, dry and wither. Read, daughter. If you abide in me. If you abide in me. And my words abide in my you. My God and my word abide in you. You shall ask what she will. You can ask why. Mm -hmm. And it shall be done unto you. You know why? Because he's empowering you for a purpose. You can get, if you gonna do Amen. Whatever it takes to expand the kingdom, God gonna give you whatever you need to get it done. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about when you work for a company and they tell you to do something, they provide you a car to drive. Yeah. And if they don't give you a car, they pay for your mileage. Come on, somebody. They
They pay for your hotel. They pay for if they move you out of state. They pay for amen the house, the move. They do why are they doing it? Because they don't want you worrying about the natural stuff. Amen. They want you to amen concentrate on the job that they sent you to do. And the less you have to worry about your temporal needs, the more you can be concentrating on the job they sent you to do. Now, if the world got that kind of sense, don't you think God got better sense than that? He says, if you'll come to me and seek me first, I will give you all of these things as long as you're seeking the kingdom. How to stop seeking things, seek the kingdom, and then I'll give you the thing. This word is spot on tonight. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Thank you, Lord. Verse 8, baby cakes. Oh, that's, what, that's my personal name. I'm sorry. <laughs> what did it say? Herein. Herein. Is my Father glorified. How is God glorified? That ye bear much fruits. Because somebody said, it is God's will. It is God's will. For the church to grow. For the church to grow. God is glorified when we grow children. Every time I open the doors of the church and one more person comes. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Every time one more person receives salvation. Hallelujah. Every time one more person gives their life to the Lord. Yes, sir. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. God is being glorified. Y'all yes. yes. ain't here. Every time ministry begins to expand, God is being glorified. Yes. God ain't glorified with the same five people we had five years ago. That's right. Say so. That's a sign that we are unhealthy. Yes. If the church is in decline, it's unhealthy. The church has to be a conglomerate if it's going to be a true representation of the church. You got to have old, young, yes. single, yes. married. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Rich, uh, poor. Yeah. It's a whole conglomerate of different people. Uh, the very spiritual and the very babes. Uh -huh. and, and the biggest attractors of the church should be sinners. Yes. Uh -huh. Everybody in the church ain't supposed to be saved. Uh -huh. If everybody in the church saved, we ain't doing our job. Amen. The biggest group in the church, the biggest group should be the unsaved. Yeah. Yet when we get saved, all of our friends are saved. Most of the time. So whenever I say, well, I'm having a revival. You want to come to my child? We got a revival at my church. That's your friend. But you're dealing with somebody, they don't rank cold sinner. That night, they might have been getting ready to go party, but they ain't going to go, yeah, man. That's right. Who did Jesus draw the most of? He, he repelled religious folk yeah. and drew the sinners. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to say that again. He repelled the religious folk and drew the sinners. I promise you, if Jesus walked around us today, we would condemn him and send him to hell. We would say he was a false prophet. Because wow. he hung around sinners. They, they came to him. And I know they wasn't sitting here with, with, with a closed can of beer. I know that's right. Y'all quiet. You're right. If they accuse you of being a wine bibber, it stands a reason you must be around folk that are drinking wine. Y'all don't like my talk. I don't care. Last scripture, and I'm bringing this in. Right. Matthew chapter 25 and 15. Matthew 25. I'm trying to tell you that it's God's will for the church to grow. Yes, sir. Yes, and again, we're going to hit this again later on, but I just, I wanted to spell that myth in your mind. I want y'all to come here and be satisfied. You know, we can say, well, you know, the late church has, has grown. Uh -huh. Yeah, but it ain't done all the growing it's going to do. And, and, and don't get satisfied with, well, but, but, but when the church grows, they're going to forget about me. Uh -huh. That's your problem. You two focused on me. Yeah. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's right. If you would get busy doing your father's business, you wouldn't be worried about you. Uh -huh. I just don't like big churches. You just get in there and you just become a number. No, you don't. If you go to work, you ain't no number. Yeah. It's those of you that just want to sit there and just be catered to yeah. and just, you know, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. That's it. Amen. Yes. Amen. You are more of a hindrance and a liability than you are an asset to the body of Christ. Amen. 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 When you get a, a part of your body, that, when my hand don't work, 
or my leg, on, I'm dragging around. That stands the reason a stroke that took place. Because it's disconnected. Something is unhealthy. If it's not working, good God. If it's not working, it's unhealthy. If you in the body and you ain't working, you unhealthy to the body. You, 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 you a stroke. An aneurysm done took place. I don't want to be the stroke. I don't want to be the limb that's turned out of the way. The body was made to be a self-healing entity. You know what? Life will happen and things will happen to limbs and limbs will get hurt. But I promise you, if you stay in the flow, if you stay connected, healing will take place. And that same limb that was broke, good God Almighty, that same limb that was broken will be stripped. Knees, praise God, that stop working. It'll be stripping. We were made to be a self-healing entity. And when we don't work, when we don't, praise God, do. Hallelujah, what we're called to do. We're a stroke. Amen. All right, what does it say later? I got quick because my time is up. I wasn't trying to hold y'all long. This just get good and good. And unto one, he gave five talents to another two and to another one. He gave my all talents, which was a unit of money. It wasn't a little bit of money. One talent, glory to God, would be equivalent to some millions of dollars today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all ain't hear me. When you start talking about money, currency, and inflation, and all that good stuff. But he gave one, one talent, one five, and one to reap. To every man according to his several abilities. And he gives you the resource according to your ability. Yes, sir. Your ability. Yes, sir. So if my ability makes me pastor, then there's going to be something that I do that you don't do. Uh -huh. But now, though he's given me more resources, he's also given me more responsibility to, to equal it out. He's also given me more accountability because responsibility equals accountability. Yes, sir. And a lot of people want a lot of resource, but they don't want accountability and they don't want responsibility. Come on, Pastor. And if, listen to what I'm telling you, if you're going to have an authority, if you're going to have a title, if you're going to be anything in God's house or abroad, you've got to be accountable and you have to be responsible. That's it. I dare not give a mic. In, in this season where the church is beginning to grow, why give the mic to somebody that, that, that's not accountable? They can say whatever they want to say. And then the church takes the blunt of it and they go on happy free. They have no responsibility. I don't want to put my children in the hands of somebody who's not accountable. Amen. Come on, somebody. Lord, I praise you. Hear what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Read, dog. And straightway it. took his journey. And he left. Then he that received five talents went and traded. Now, now, now listen, listen, listen. The man that he gave five talents to went and traded it. With the same. With the same. Read. And made them other five talents. He made him other. He was productive. Say that with me. Productive. Productive. When God gives you something, he wants you to increase it. That's it. That's right. Whatever God gives you, you're supposed to increase it. Amen. Whatever gifting God gives you, you're supposed to make it better. That's right. God gave you a gift. Your gift to God is what you do with it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come on, somebody. Amen. Listen, read. And likewise, he that had received two. And the one that got two. He also gave other two. Y'all hear me on Facebook Live? He went and got two. Mm -hmm. Read. But he that received one. But he that received one went and digged in the earth like some of us in the church and hid his Lord's money. Hid. I ain't gonna do I'm gonna give it back to God the same way he gave it to me. I ain't yeah. changing nothing. Yeah. I ain't gonna change. Uh -huh. God don't change. I ain't gonna change. Y'all ever heard people preach like that? Yeah. Yes. I used to. <laughs> God don't have to change. God is perfect. I can't say the same for myself. He's God. 
Watch this. After a long time, the Lord of those servants comes. After a long time, Sister Whitehurst, the Lord of those servants come. And reckoneth with them. And he comes to God, comes and reckon with you for you and your Holy Ghost. Yes. And so he that has the Holy Ghost, he comes and reckon with you and your tongue. Because uh -huh. you thought it was a tongue. Uh -huh. That's what you thought it was. You thought, oh, oh, oh. That's what you thought, that, 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 that. we have the Holy Ghost. Hey, hey, that, that, that's your whole that's, that's the extent. Uh -huh. Your feeling. Yeah. You ain't did nothing with it. No, no. No, your neighbor don't even know you say. Neighbor don't even know your name. Wow. The Holy Ghost. What kind of Holy Ghost you got? Nobody don't know who you are. Yeah, I'm going to challenge you tonight. I'm going to challenge you. God's name. I'm going to challenge you. Watch this. And so, and so, he that had received five talents came and bought other five talents. Watch this trouble, Bill. He that had got the five talents come and bought his other five talents. Uh -huh. Saying, saying what? Lord, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Lord, you gave me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. I've gained five more. His Lord said unto him, What did he say? Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Ain't that what that man preached on Friday night? It will make us home? Uh-huh. Well done. He said, well done. Well done. He didn't say, why did you make me more money? My God. What's wrong with you? It ain't all about money. Mm -hmm. It ain't all about the numbers. We hear people talk. It ain't all about the numbers because they ain't got none. That's right. That's that part. That's right. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Or they're jealous of somebody that got more than them. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. Oh, y'all quiet. <laughs> he said, well done. Yeah, well you done. did well. Uh -huh. Which means I approve. Yes. Read. Thou has been faithful over a few things. He says, Brother Paul, when it increases, he says that's faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Faithfulness is productivity. Yes. Yes. Faithfulness is increase. Faithfulness is not because you come to church on time every Sunday. Mm -hmm. You can be here every Sunday and do nothing. You are not faithful if you don't produce nothing. Come on. You are not faithful if you don't not time. You are not faithful if you don't do nothing. Wow. Amen. Good and faithful is productive yes. and busy. Yes. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Come on. I will make thee ruler over many things. Because you were faithful, you were productive, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you more responsibility. Because you demonstrated proficiency in the least. Mm -hmm. So if you're faithful in the least, I know if I add at least 10 to you, mm -hmm. you're going to do some more with it. Yeah. Uh -huh. People that do something with what they got, God adds more to you. If he gave you this degree of, you know, God come through here and ramshack this on Sunday. If we did just a little bit with what he gave us on Sunday, what will it do the next Sunday when it comes? Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? He wants to give you more, but he wants to see if he can trust you with the little bit that he gave you. What are you doing with the little bit that I've given you? Increase. Go to work. Whatever is right, I'll pay you. Come on. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Yes. He also that had received the two talents came and said, What? Lord, thou mm -hmm. deliverest unto me two talents. You gave me two talents? Behold, I have gained two other talents beside thee. Come on. His Lord said unto him, What did he say, Lord? Well done, good and faithful servant. Now, after he done heard all of them well done from the first two, I wonder what he thinking. Yeah, yeah. When the Lord getting ready to come to him. Uh-huh. You think God getting ready to praise him? What, what is that, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Come on. I will make thee ruler over many things. Read. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Read. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord. All you had was the only thing you need to do was one thing. I just want to give you one thing to do. That's all. I just want to. Ain't give you a whole lot. Ain't give you all that response. 
Could you imagine me trying to pastor the pot house right now? <laughs> you couldn't pay me to do it. I'm, and I'm being serious. You, I, Richard Jason called that pastor squad. I need you to pastor the part of the house for six months while I go on sabbatical. Bishop, call Pastor Brady. Hey, Brady. <laughs> I can do it. No, sir. Somebody said, hey, yes, you can. Mm -hmm. It would decrease because I'm not there yet. Hey, I'm trying to help y'all to be yes. understanding of yes, what sir. I'm trying to say. Come on. When God gives you the ability, yeah. then you use it. Yes. All right, all right, come on, come on, come on. This is good to me, y'all. I'm sorry. I've kept y'all 11 minutes over. I knew thee that thou art in a hard man. Oh, there you go with the excuses, man. Yeah, yeah. Reap it where thou hast not sown. I know all this about you. And gather where thou hast not strong. Yeah. And I was afraid. And he let fear stop him. And I went and hid thy talent in the earth. And I hid what you gave me. Lo. Lo. There thou hast that is thine. Here it is, Lord. That what you gave me, here it is. I got it, yeah. Now what did he say to him? His Lord answered and said to him, What? Thou wicked. wicked. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. I only got one wife. I don't cheat on my wife. Wicked. I don't drink. <laughs> I go to church every Sunday. Wicked and slow for certain. Wicked and slow. You wicked and that's what sloth will be lazy. Uh -huh. Old English will let you really, you don't do none of them stuff that you say other folks are wrong with, but God said you're wicked. Yeah. So you don't do nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. nothing. I hope I'm challenging y'all tonight. Yes, I hope y'all searching your eyes and Lord, I sure hope I ain't wicked and lazy. <laughs> That's what you need to be thinking. Yeah. Not like mm, we talked about Marshall over there. Marshall need to get me together. No! I'm talking about you. Because you might be productive in one area, but you're not going, you, 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 you operating on 30%, but you're actually a 60% person. And so you're working beneath your means. I said, no, nah, baby, you better crank it up. Crank it up. Amen. 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 Read. Read. Thou knewest that I reap where I sow. You sons. knew I was all of these things, Ben. Uh -huh. Come on. And gather where I have not strong. You knew all this about me. Not all is therefore to have put my money to the exchange. You at least ought to have put it in the bank, Misha, and I could have got three cents. As <laughs> long as I've been gone, they at least give you three cents. Yeah. yeah. On your dog. Yeah. That ain't much. I just wanted some increase. Yeah. I'm talking your language now, now Sister Shannon. I know. <laughs> Read. And then at my coming, yeah, at my coming, I should have received my own with usury. I would at least receive that, the principal, right. with interest on it. Take therefore the talent from him. Now, now watch what he said, uh, uh, Brother Trouble. He said, "Take the talent from him and give it unto him." And give it to him. him that got ten. Yeah. Read this. Watch this. For unto everyone that have that have shall be given. Everyone that have is going to be given. And he shall have abundance. And he gonna have abundance. But from him that have not. Him that that means that you have the ability to have, but you chose not to do anything with it. Well. Shall be taken away. Come on. Even that which he had. The Lord explained that to me years wow. ago, and I'm and I'm, I'm gonna say this. I'm I'm done. Wow. I remember when a prominent pastor moved to Durham yes. and began his ministry. Got on television. And he began to take Durham by storm. And people just started coming. Now, my poor pastor had been in Durham for 50 years and didn't have 50 members. Praise God. And, 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 and you know, because of my old mind, he, he ain't preaching nothing. You know, boy, down, them folk ain't saved. They ain't living nothing. They, praise God. And, 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 I was kind of, and then I was over here working at night now, and I was kind of salty about the thing. And the Lord corrected me. Lord, he, he, he said, keep your mouth off that yes, man. Sir. Yes, sir. He said, what is it if I give him the whole city of Durham? What is it? Your preacher been there for 50 years wow. and ain't did nothing. Wow. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. If you want more, yes, do more. Yes, sir. If you want 
want an increase, don't be jealous that other folk got something. What are you doing with what you got? What are you doing with what you If you want God to trust you with more, do more. Wait, church, if you want to be a more influential church, do more. Expand your base. So don't complain about what is not. Before you complain about anything that is not, ask yourself, have I done everything that was required of me? Amen. If I have not, keep your mouth shut till you do something. Well, well. I will. And this is the way Pastor Scott operates. Amen. I'm going to stand up at the top of the mountain and tell you, come on up. My God. I ain't going to never be behind you pushing. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Come on. No, 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 no. I'm always going to be. You know why? Because I'm going to lead by example. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be telling you to do something that has not been proven in my life. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. A tree is not validated by what it says. It's validated by what it bears. That's it. That's it. It's an apple tree, not because it got apple leaves. It's an apple tree when it bears apples. That's when you know it's an apple tree. You saw, it said apple. The leaves look like apple tree, but 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 you kind of if it ain't bad nothing in life, you know what I'm saying? That might not be apple. But if an apple come on that tree in the way, it remove all doubt. Yes, sir. That's it. Is that a church? I don't know. Ain't nobody there. The lights are out. <laughs> May God bless you tonight. We've been empowered for a purpose. Does that make sense to yes, yes. He didn't just give us the Holy Ghost to have church. He gave us the Holy Ghost to be the church. Amen. And the Holy Ghost is influence. He said this, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. All those rivers are not tongues. Tongues is just one river. Come on, somebody. The other rivers are knowledge, influence, power. Creativity. Yeah. A river is where they build civilizations on. Yeah. And that's inside of you. Amen. May God bless you, is my prayer. I hope y'all got something out of this. Yeah. In Jesus name. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this word tonight. Thank you for all of your people that have present themselves in the house of the Lord. We pray tonight, Lord, that this word has spilled on good ground. That it may yield some 30, some 60, some 100 for it. Those that are watching my Facebook live, Lord, let it be a reminder that you require more of us. And never, ever let us get complacent and satisfied. But help us always feel like there's more to be done in the kingdom. We want to work until our days are done. And to this we say thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We ask Deacon Smith if he'll come up and lift up our offering. Praise God. Glory to God. Those of you that are watching by Facebook Live, amen, you may give electronically if you so desire. Amen. Dollar sign the way church 6600. Amen. Whenever you hear a word, sow into it, especially if it burns your heart and it touched you and it gave you something, praise the Lord, to hold on to. Always sow something to it because the anointing that you respect is the anointing that you're going to attract. Praise the Lord. Amen in Jesus' name. And if you just if you have uh, a monetary gift, uh, currency, just lift your hand and, and Deacon, he'll come to you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. If you're just paying uh, by way of, of, of praise the Lord, cash out is dollar sign the way church 6600 in Jesus' name. While I'm waiting for my change to come, I will trust God. Oh, I will trust that. Oh, while I'm waiting for my day to come, I will trust God.